Hey everyone, my name's Andrew, and this is the Culips English Podcast. Thank you for joining me for another English study session. Let's do it, everyone. Are you ready? I'm really happy that you decided to press play on this episode and put in some time and effort and work toward improving your English, improving your life, and getting closer to your goals for the English language. For those of you who are new here or who don't know me, I'm an English teacher who's originally from Canada, but now I live in Seoul, South Korea, with my wife and my dog, Pinky. And here at Culips, we make audio lessons for intermediate and advanced English learners that are designed to teach you real and natural English and to improve your communication skills and your cultural knowledge of the culture of English-speaking people. Each week on Monday morning, I release a short bonus episode, and that's what you're listening to right now. And in these bonus episodes, I share some updates about what's going on in my life, and I also teach you a useful expression. The transcript for the bonus episode is completely free, and it can be downloaded just by clicking the link in the description for this episode, or by visiting our website, which is culips.com. So guys, how's it going? I hope you had a nice weekend and a good week last week. Are you ready to take on another brand new week? If you're wondering about me, I'm doing pretty well. Last Monday, I went on an epic bike ride that was really, really fun and really awesome. It seems like the rainy season in Korea here has finally come to an end and we've been having some really hot but really nice and really sunny weather. So last week on Monday, after waking up, I just knew that I had to get out there and go for a ride. I felt that call, that itch, that desire to get out there and go for a ride. Many of you know this, but I work as an English instructor. That's my job. But the school that I work at is on summer break right now. And as a result of that, so am I. So it's beautiful. I have some free time these days. And I was able to get out and ride on a Monday, which I realize is something kind of special. A lot of people have to work on Monday, but I didn't have to. So I could get out and enjoy the relatively empty bike paths. Because on the weekend, the bike paths here in Seoul, they are just completely jam-packed with people and riders. But on Monday morning, the paths were practically empty, so it was really fantastic. My mission for the ride was to reach the end of a bike path that runs from the Han River, which is this big river that cuts through the middle of Seoul. And then this bike path heads north from the Han River through the eastern part of Seoul and into the next province outside of Seoul, which is called Gyeonggi-do. I think Korean listeners will know exactly where I'm talking about, but for other listeners from around the world, it's just a big bike path here in Seoul. Anyway, I didn't know how long this would take, but I estimated that it might be around a couple of hours. And it turns out I was right on the money. <laughs> I was right on the money. When you're right on the money, this is a slang expression, by the way, right on the money. That means to be exactly correct about a guess or an estimate. So I was right on the money and exactly about two hours into my ride, I hit a dead end. Suddenly the path just ended. And I'll include a photo that I took in the PDF version of this transcript so you guys can take a look and see what I'm talking about. So the ride was pleasant enough. It went through the intense urban city at first and then through the apartment filled burbs. And then finally, I hit the countryside. And along the way, there were some awesome views of the local mountains. So all in all, the ride was really great. But there was one thing that was so stupid of me not to do before I left for the ride, and that was to apply sunscreen. <laughs> Guys, I really messed up. I made a big mistake. I should have put on sunscreen before I left, but I didn't. For those of you who haven't seen what I look like before, I'm a really pasty, white, and fair-skinned person. 
And when I stay in the sun for too long, I get sunburned, not tanned, burned. My skin turns red and it's really painful. I actually did put sunscreen on my face and on my neck. Shout out to my mother-in-law, by the way, who gave me the high SPF sunscreen that I used on my face and neck. It was perfect. It was very effective. But my arms and my legs, though, I, I thought they would be covered enough by my bike clothes and by my biking posture that I wouldn't get burned. But turns out I was totally wrong and it was a really dumb mistake, but I got very, very sunburned on my arms and my legs especially the bottom part of my arms from my wrist to my elbow and on my legs from my knees to about my mid thighs where my bike shorts stopped. I think I also probably got a case of sunstroke as well because I felt completely zapped the rest of the day. Totally, totally zapped. Have you heard that expression before? To be zapped? It's a slang expression that means to have zero energy. So I was totally zapped for the rest of the day. I had no energy and I couldn't really get much accomplished at all, unfortunately. So yeah, that was not the greatest start to the week last week. I mean, the ride was great, but the burn sucked. And in fact, the rest of the week until about Friday, my skin was super sore and I just stayed inside. I couldn't really even go outside because just the sunlight hitting my skin for a moment was really painful. So I just hung out inside avoiding the sun and it was a real shame too because last week was some of the nicest weather we've had here all summer. Really hot, but nice, but unfortunately, I just had to look at it from an inside perspective. Anyways, everyone, don't worry about me. I'm feeling totally fine again now, and I'm happy about that. And then last week on Tuesday, I hosted our monthly live stream for Qlips members, and it was fantastic. It was great to spend an hour hanging out with some of our members from around the world and practicing English together. Guys, this is one of the highlights of my month. It really makes me feel like what I'm doing here at Qlips is a real thing. I get to interact with you guys, and it makes me feel like the work that I'm doing here at Qlips is meaningful and that we are doing something great here at Qlips. We're building this fantastic community of English learners who are all working together to get closer to achieving our goals. So I want to say thank you to everybody who participated in the stream. I hope you guys had as much fun as I did. And we will be having another stream coming up in August at the end of August on the 30th of August at 7.30 p.m. Korean Standard Time. If you're a Qlips member, you'll be able to find all the details about how to participate and how to join and what time it's happening at just by logging into your Qlips account and going to the dashboard. And if you're able to participate, it would be great to see you all there for the next live stream and I know that depending on your geographic location in the world, maybe it's difficult to join the stream in real time and watch it live, but all of the past live streams are archived on our website and you can watch the replays of them. So if you wanted to participate in the live stream, but you weren't able to catch it live for whatever reason, you can check out the archive version, which is on our Qlips website just by logging into your Qlips account and clicking the live stream option from the menu. In other Qlips news, I also got together to record some new episodes with Cassie, my co-host, last week. Now you may be wondering about Cassie because she recently moved here from South Korea to her new home in Bangkok, Thailand. And I have good news to report. She's arrived in Thailand safe and sound. And we had a great chat about her first impressions of life in Thailand and what her new life is like there. So we're going to try and get those episodes prepared and uploaded as soon as possible for you so that you can all listen to them and hear some news about Cassie and improve your English with those conversations. 
If I recall correctly, I talked about this on the live stream last week briefly. So Culebs members, if you've heard this story before, I apologize. But for everyone who didn't hear, I'm getting ready to take a trip to Canada soon with my wife. This is our big plan for August. This will be my first time visiting Canada since COVID started and my first visit with my wife as well. We got married last year and she's never been to Canada and honestly, she hasn't even really met my family before. Unfortunately, when we got married, it was like peak COVID time and traveling was impossible. So aside from video calls, uh, she's never really met my family. So I think it's going to be a pretty interesting experience introducing her to my friends and family back home. I feel like I should be excited to introduce my wife to Canada and to show her where I'm from, show her my home, where I grew up. But to be honest, I'm feeling more stressed than excited. I'm really feeling the pressure of wanting to make the trip really great. And I'm trying my best to plan out some fun activities and make an interesting itinerary of things to do. But I'm worried that if things don't go well, that her first impression of Canada will be a bad one. And on top of that, what I've seen on the news and heard from some family back home, it doesn't really seem like the greatest time to travel to Canada. <laughs> if you, in the back of your mind, have a trip planned to Canada in the next few months, maybe you might want to think about putting that plan on pause just for a moment. Canada is a good country, but we're going through some things right now, it seems. I'm not sure about where you guys live, but I heard that the air travel situation right now is a complete nightmare in Canada. I guess what happened is that airports and airlines fired a lot of staff during COVID. There weren't any passengers flying, so they didn't need the extra staff, so they let them go. To let someone go is like to fire somebody, but not because that person made a mistake. It's more like you can't afford them or you don't need their help, that kind of thing. So a lot of staff were let go. And right now there is a major staff shortage at the airports in Canada. The airlines don't have enough staff and the airports don't have enough staff either. So the airports and the airlines are painfully understaffed right now. Now, because of this, there are a lot of flight cancellations. If there are not enough flight attendants or pilots, then you can't operate a flight, right? And there are also really long lines and waits at the airports. In fact, airports are recommending checking in five hours before your flight starts so that you can get through security without missing your flight. It sounds pretty bad. On top of that, there are endless stories of lost bags and luggage. And in fact, the airline that we are scheduled to travel with had the most flight cancellations in the world last week. So I'm hoping for the best, but I'm mentally preparing for a worst case travel situation. And if it weren't for the fact that I really want to introduce my wife to my family, I think I wouldn't be even going on this trip right now. I think it would be best if I just waited it out and hoped for the situation to improve in the future. But it's too late to back out now. We have everything booked and planned. So we're just crossing our fingers that we can get to Canada and then back to Korea safe and sound without too many delays or setbacks or stress. So over the next couple of weeks while I'm traveling, we're still going to be releasing Culips episodes and I'm even going to try and release bonus episodes while I'm in Canada as well. But guys, if I'm a little bit slower than usual to respond to emails or Instagram messages, it's just because I'm going to try and disconnect from my online life as much as possible while I'm away and to enjoy some time back home with friends and family. 
But that being said, I'm going to try and post some updates to my Instagram stories as well. So if you're the kind of person who enjoys following travel adventures on Instagram, then be sure to follow Culips underscore English on Instagram and you can stay up to date with my trip and my travels. It's time for this week's vocabulary lesson. Okay, guys, the phrase that I want to focus on today is an easy one. Yay, good news. I love easy expressions. But to be honest, I don't hear many English learners use it very often. It's one of those phrases that you can probably easily understand when you hear it, but you may not have added it to your vocabulary yet. And I really do recommend memorizing it and using this one in your English speaking because it's one of those expressions that can really make your English pop and sound a lot more natural. So the phrase is to wait it out, to wait it out. Guys, that is one, two, three, four words. To wait it out, okay? And wait is like waiting, W-A-I-T, okay? When you are enduring something. <laughs> So to wait it out, when we say it quickly, it sounds like wait it out, wait it out, wait it out. Do you notice how that final T sound in wait is actually transferred more to a D sound when we say it quickly, right? Wait it out, wait it out. It's not a harsh T sound. It's more of a softer, almost between a T and a D sound, but that's how we pronounce it, to wait it out. Did you hear when I used this expression earlier in the episode? Why don't we go back and take a listen to that part a couple of more times? Let's do it. If it weren't for the fact that I really want to introduce my wife to my family, I think I wouldn't be even going on this trip right now. I think it would be best if I just waited it out and hoped for the situation to improve in the future. I think it would be best if I just waited it out and hoped for the situation to improve in the future. I think it would be best if I just waited it out and hoped for the situation to improve in the future. So the expression that we're talking about is wait it out, wait it out. Now this expression simply means to wait for something to be finished or to wait for something to end. So earlier in the episode, I was talking about visiting Canada, and I said that I should have waited it out before visiting Canada. And what I meant here is that I should have waited for the terrible airport situation in Canada to be completely fixed and solved before making a trip back home. I've prepared some example sentences to listen to that will help us understand this expression more deeply. So let's take a listen to them now. Example sentence number one. The movie was so bad that I couldn't even wait it out. I had to leave halfway through it. The movie was so bad that I couldn't even wait it out. I had to leave halfway through it. The movie was so bad that I couldn't even wait it out. I had to leave halfway through it. Let's break this example sentence down. So the speaker in that example sentence was watching a movie that was so bad, he couldn't wait it out. He couldn't wait until the movie was finished to go home. He had to walk out and leave the movie theater in the middle of the movie. He couldn't wait it out. He couldn't wait for it to finish. Example sentence number two. My map app says there's a huge traffic jam right now. I think it's best if we wait it out before we leave. Otherwise, we'll just be stuck in traffic for a few hours. My map app says there's a huge traffic jam right now. I think it's best if we wait it out before we leave. Otherwise, we'll just be stuck in traffic for a few hours. My map app says there's a huge traffic jam right now. I think it's best if we wait it out before we leave. Otherwise, we'll just be stuck in traffic for a few hours. Let's break that example down. So in that example, the speaker says that he checked his map 
app on his phone and he noticed that there is a big traffic jam right now. Traffic isn't moving at all. So he thinks that it's best if his friends and he waited out, right? So they want to wait until the traffic jam is finished and gone and completed. Then they can get in their car and start their trip. Example sentence number three. The department store is always crazy busy on the first day of the sale. Just wait it out and go the next day and you'll have a way better shopping experience. The department store is always crazy busy on the first day of the sale. Just wait it out and go the next day and you'll have a way better shopping experience. The department store is always crazy busy on the first day of the sale. Just wait it out and go the next day. You'll have a way better shopping experience. Let's break that example sentence down. So the speaker of that sentence is making a suggestion to his friend. And the suggestion is don't go to the department store on the first day of the sale. The department store is very, very busy with shoppers on the first day of the sale. So instead, what he recommends is waiting it out. Wait until all of the craziness is finished and there aren't as many shoppers in the department store. Go the next day and you'll have a better shopping experience that's less crowded and less busy. Okay, everyone, that's all I've got for you today. Congrats on completing another English study session. You're a little bit closer to reaching your English goals and you can feel good about that. If you enjoyed this episode and find QLips helpful for building your English language skills, we'd really appreciate your support. The best way to support us is by becoming a QLips member. And there are tons of awesome bonuses that you get when you become a member. And you can learn all about them by visiting our website, QLips.com. Take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye.